Welcome back. Now I've said in the previous video that it was the last video on collections, uh, so I lied a bit. Uh, let's look at this one also, just a real world type of example to see how we can actually use these collections. So I created a new project. Uh, if went into Dart projects, I created the project folder called a read from CSV and I have moved into that folder and I will create a new project in VS Code. Right, in VS Code, once you are there, let's just uh, add your main.dart file there and go into it and let's have the main method there. Right, and you can save. You can also open your terminal, so just say new terminal, terminal and new terminal at the top so that we have a terminal to work with at the bottom. Right, so it's already in read from CSV, so I can just basically go and say dart main dot dart, and then it runs my application, not that it's doing anything. Right, so before we start with the application, I want to open up Microsoft Excel. Okay, so this is Excel, and I've got a few columns at the top, the first name, the last name, and the mark, with a few names and a few marks. So let's say this is your spreadsheet with all of your marks for your students or whatever, and you can even have more columns there uh, with some other values, maybe different types of tests that you wrote or whatever. And in this case, it's just going to keep it small so it's easy to understand. So we've got three columns, first name, last name, and the mark, and then we've got the data in there. So what I want to do now is to go to the file menu and say save as. Now you can go to your projects and go into that read from CSV folder and save it there but not as a TXT. So I'm just going to call it, let's just go here at the file format and choose CSV comma delimited. And then I'm going to replace this part there by just calling it marks so it's easy to type later on when we start to run it inside of our application. So I want to use comma separated values and it must be in that folder that you just created. So if we go now into Visual Studio Code you will see marks.csv will now be there. So it could be that yours will be different from mine because I'm using a Mac. Uh, mine is set up to use not comma separated values but semicolon separated values. So if you feel you cannot follow without having the exact same file as mine, uh, please download the file using the following link. So you can go to bit.ly forward slash marks CSV, enter. You will see the file and you can just use this download button there to download the file and copy that file into your project. Right, so let's go back to main. So uh, we'll talk about some other values that you could possibly have here and see how we can also sort that out. So if you want to use your own example also or another file that looks differently, uh, we'll quickly talk about that also. Right, so what the idea is that we read from this file and you can see the, the first line there is basically first name, last name and mark. So that's the, the column names. And then we get the first name, the last name, the mark for every single student. So we can do something like calculate the average again and maybe print out everything on the screen. Right, so let's go into main or dot. In here, we're going to ask the user first for the name of the file. So we're going to say enter a file name to read from. Okay, and then we get the file name. So we're going to say file name equals stdin dot read line sync so we get the name of the file and then we can read from the file by doing the following we're going to say final lines to get the lines from the file equals going to the file class and if you enter there you will see it imports from dart.io the same as we did for the read line sync of stdin also and then it wants the path so the path will just be that file name that uh, the user entered so this one will be the path because it's in my project folder I will get the path right there and then I could use the read as lines sync and you can see it synchronously reads the entire file contents as lines of text using the given encoding and the coding is UTF okay and then it's going to give you a list of strings and that list of strings is basically every string in there is a new line so also if you hover over this you can see it's a list of string objects so remember we worked with lists now so we'll see how this works so as an example, if I print this now and I just say lines there 
and I save and I run this again enter the name of the file it's going to be marks.csv and you can see there it reads the data and it prints it out so obviously this is not very understandable so we'll need to look at the values and see how we can change it or print it out nicely now the first thing I want to do is to remove this very first line there because the first line is just headers it's nothing else not something that makes sense to us so that's just headers remove it so how do we remove it I will basically go to lines which is a list now and I will say remove at position zero because that will be at the very first one and if we print it out now you'll see that that bot there will now be gone right so let's look at a for loop quickly so I'm going to use the for in loop so let's say var line in lines so every variable line here will basically be one line in the file so you can see it's a string and this one lines is a list of strings so this is every line inside of this list of lines so let's just print out this one quickly so you can see the difference if I print out line there, save it now, run it again, file name, marks.csv. I think I'm going to copy this one, so I just paste it next time, and run it. So you can see there's every line. John Rambo, Peter Pollock, Kevin Hart, Morgan Freeman, Tony Stark, and there it is. So now you can see the data is separated by semicolons. So it could be that your data is not separated by semicolons, but maybe separated by commas. So on a Windows machine, probably yours will be separated by commas. But if you use the same file as mine, you downloaded it, then you can follow me exactly the same. But I'll quickly talk about uh, the comma also. And in some cases also, your John, your Rambo, and your 100 will be in double quotation marks so how can you remove those double quotation marks also so we'll quickly look at that right so now we printed every line but that's not what we want to do so I'm going to declare a variable final values equals line dot split now this split method is a very useful method for me to get data that is separated by something so in this case our data here is separated by a semicolon so the pattern I will use here is the semicolon so I will put single quotation marks and then the semicolon if your data was separated by a comma then you would use the comma there so that's the thing that separates your data in my case it's the semicolon in some languages they refer to as the delimiter the thing that's separating my data and now the data will be John Rambo and 100 that I want to extract from it so if I print this out now let's print out values now let's look at the type of values if I hover over it it's again a list of string values and let's print out values at position 0 values at position 0 should print out all the names so if I run save this now and I run it again name of the file and you can see now we only print the names no semicolons or anything else if I want to print out uh, the marks let's say if that would be position 2 and now it just prints out all the marks so you can see that the split method basically takes that line and takes the data out of that one line and the data is separated by the delimiter in this case the semicolon and I will get a list of values which will be in position 0, 1 and 2 because there's three sets of values. Right, so now we know how to get each specific value but let's say that we want to now work out the average. So I'm going to have a variable at the top that will be the sum and we'll assign it the value of 0, 0.0 so it's a double and let's work out the sum now here. So we will say sum plus equals going to values and the mark is at position 2 now so just to quickly show you again there let's print out oh not here let's print it out here print line just to get that value back again just going to comment out this one and I'm going to comment out that one just want to quickly show you again so you can see every line looks like this now so using the split method splits it into those three values John Rambo and 100 John is at position 0 Rambo position 1 and the market position 2 so that's what I'm trying to do here so first split it and then go into the sum 
and I'm going to go to values 2 because it's 0, 1, 2. That's the mark. Okay, now it gives me a problem here. It says the argument type string cannot be assigned to the parameter type. I want to add a string now to something that's a double, which means I will need to go to double dot pass. And I took away everything. So let's just start there. So we're going to go to values at position 2. So I'm converting the string value 100 to a double and I'm adding it to the sum. And at the end we should be able to see the sum. So let's print out the sum quickly there and run it again. Paste the file and the marks or the sum is 671. I'm not sure if that's correct but it should be. Okay so now we've got the sum and we want to work out the average. So we can have something like uh, the average of all marks is, let's use the dollar sign, and we will go to sum, and let me just put this in brackets, the sum divided by the number of elements, and that's basically the number of lines after this one has been removed. So it's going to be lines dot length, that's the number of lines we have. And that's the number of uh, marks we also have. And that will give you the average. But I want that average to string as fixed. And I'm going to say 2 there. Or oh, let's maybe say a 0 there. And save this again. Let's put a percentage at the end. Save it. And let's run quickly. Dot based. The average of all marks is 75%. If I wanted to have uh, two decimal places, I could have changed that to a 2. Right, so far so good. So we've got the average of all those marks. And uh, you can work out some other values also if you wanted to. So let's say we also want to print out all the students line by line. So we can also go then into the for loop. And we can print out values at position 0 will give me the name. Do a space values at position 1 will give me the first name or the first name first at position 0 then the last name and then the mark um, with a mark of put the dollar sign again and then values position 2 so if we run this now use the file and we print it out I can see John Rambo with a mark of 100, this guy, this guy, this guy with a mark of whatever, and then we get the average. Okay, so if you wanted to print it out, something like that. Now, another thing we can also do is to actually put this data in another data type or another collection. So let's say that we have a collection called students, and we start off this collection, which is just a normal list, as an empty list. Now, inside of this, Instead of just printing it out, I can actually go to the students list, which is currently empty, and I'm going to add, every time the loop runs, I'm going to add a new element inside of this list. Now, the element I want to add into the list is a map. So I can just do the following, just do curly braces, and I'm adding a map now. And for the map, I can have a first name as a key, and the value will be values at position 0. So that's the name. Then the last name will be values at position 1. And then the mark will be values at position 2. And uh, by just doing this, I have now added to this list of students, which is just a normal list, I've added maps into the list, which has got a first name, a last name, and the mark. Let's just say mark there. Right, so at the end, we can then also, let's print uh, a new line and maybe another new line. And then we print students. Save it. Let's run it quickly. Right, so there you can see the printout at the bottom. This is my list of maps.
So first name John, last name Rambo, Mark 100. Next guy, first name Peter, last name Pollock, Mark 80. So uh, this is just a simple example on how you can read actually from a file and also then build up some useful collections that you can later on use in your application. Right, let's just quickly have a look at Mark's uh, CSV again. Let's say that your data contained something like this. And uh, maybe yours were comma separated instead of semicolon separated. So obviously for your split method, I'm going to save. Um, so let's say you had double quotation marks around every single value here. Then um, you could have gone to your split method and just use the comma there. Then just before we split, we can go to that specific line and use the replace all method. Now the from you could change to the double quotation and the one that you want to replace it with will just be an empty string. And we want to replace our line with that new value. Now let's save this and let's see if it still works. I'm going to run it again. That's the name of the file and still it works. John Rambo with a mark of 100. Peter Pollock with a mark of 80. Okay, so you can see that when your file looks a bit different than mine and you had maybe some maybe for example i could add for this one for mike i can also add it and it doesn't matter because i'm replacing those with something else which is just an empty space so even if i run it now again you will still see that mike mcdonald is 100 percent fine now what happens if I leave out that one line? So if I leave it out and save it, run it again, uh, you can see that there's some format exception because it's an invalid double because it's trying to take the double as double quotation mark, 100 double quotation mark. So it's got a problem working with it. So if your file has got some weird characters in it, you can always just replace that weird characters with an empty space. Right, or just an empty character. That's basically what we did here with the empty character. So maybe yours looked something like this line. Uh, then feel free to add this one line just to replace all the double quotation marks with basically nothing. Right, that's it for this video. See you in the next one.